Hey, so about six months ago, I released my custom dispersed glass shader. I was super proud of it when I released it and everyone gave me a lot of compliments, which made me feel very good, but I knew that there was still a lot missing from it. And if I had the time to dedicate to it, I could make it better. So in this video, we are gonna go over the release of my dispersed glass shader 2.0, which you can find available for free in the description, by the way. And just for a little bit of fun, we're gonna go over how you can make this scene. But before we hop into that scene, let's take some time and go over everything the shader can do and how it works, how to import it to your blender, and yeah. So with the shader, the very first thing that I want to go over is that it will not work in versions that are below 3.4. So if you are using Blender 3.3 or before that, uh, use my old shader, um, there's nothing wrong with it, just a few less options, you know? So of course you have your, your base IOR setting, you are gonna find that on any glass shader, you know, moving this up and down is gonna change it between like a very reflective glass to like a chrome look, and typically this will be stationed around 1.45, that is the default that I've used uh, in like the back end of this. I don't know why I said back end. It's just notes. It's just notes. So next up, of course, we have our roughness values for our glass. And personally, I think that the like the roughened glass look on this just looks so good, dude. I'm very proud of it. I think it looks great. Uh, we again have our base value, which is similar to our IOR. It's just another driver that's like controlling reflections. And this on default is set to 0 0.05. Now here's where we start getting into the fun stuff. Of course, we have our base color. So in my old shader, there was no option to change the base color without going into the node tree itself and that was just a hassle you actually you couldn't change any of the colors without going into the node tree itself and that was stupid i could have very easily fixed that but i was lazy um of course this is super easy it, you know the you guys understand the base concept of this our red green and blue values are our refraction so whatever is reflecting back at us and yeah very simple stuff going on there however we have further control with our factors so let's say like right now we've got a little bit too much purple going on what I want to do is pull back on our blue and pull back on our red a little bit. And we've got less purple appearing in our glass without having to change our main colors up here. And playing around with these factors, you can really fine tune a lot of things and get some effects that are very interesting. If you pull them all down to about 0.3, you can get this weird like frosted look, almost as if you've turned the roughness up, but you don't lose any of the shine because it's like, it's now white glass that's only like marginally saturated. And I think that that looks really cool. I've also included a clear value, which is just a if you want to get rid of, you know, 90% of the refraction going on in this, you can, or you can make it all the way clear. Don't really know why you would use this to make it all the way clear, because like, you know, that's just a regular glass shader and this is way too complex, but it is for helping so that if you want to get rid of some of the, the roughness, some of the refraction, this is super helpful. Now this time around, all of our secondary values are also new to the shader. We originally just had one set of refraction, one set of roughness, one set of everything, right? But now there, it, it doubles up because I wanted to make a kind of like Fresnel effect so that you have a separate set of refractions and reflections happening just on the edges of your glass. So if we turn our secondary roughness all the way up, you can see that the center area of our glass is still very see-through, but all of the edges have become almost completely opaque. I think that this could be used very creatively. Is it realistic? Not really, but you could use it to get like some very cool effects that otherwise would be kind of hard to get. Of course, we have our secondary IOR and our secondary value. Of course, these do the exact same things where we're changing the reflection and refraction rate of the edges of our glass. Again, we have these set to 1.45 and 0.05 as our defaults. And again, same thing with our colors where we can just go through and really fine tune all of these. Now, the last thing that's new about this shader is the transmission value. And this was a relatively late add in the production of this shader, but it does something kind of cool. So if we turn our transmission all the way down, we get a, a solid effect that does have like some refraction happening. You can see colors in the noise kind of appearing, which is like kind of cool if you want that, but I don't think anybody really does. But something you can use the transmission for is you'll notice with our base roughness, if we turn this all the way up, it is incredibly noisy, right? We don't want that to be so noisy. So something that we can do is turn this up to something like three and then lower our transmission value and we get a very similar look that is so much less noisy. So ultimately, while you can do creative things with the transmission value, I think that this is going to be more of a practical thing that saves on time if you're wanting to do frosted glass. On the second release of the shader, you might also notice that there is a normal input so that you can add noises to your shader now. This was always possible before, but you would have had to have gone in and do it yourself. So now it's just readily available right on there. You can do whatever you want right out of the box. So now that we've gone over everything with the shader, let's go ahead and dive into how to make that scene that I showed in the beginning. 
So again, making sure we're in Blender 3.5 and above, we're gonna start working on this scene. And this is super easy to create this type of stuff. I love making stuff like this because you just let the like the creative juices kind of take over and you just have fun. You don't have to think about math and like all the other crap that comes with 3D software stuff sometimes. You could just make something and that's fun. So we're gonna start off with a plane. We're gonna throw a sub div on it and we're gonna crank this up to five and then we are gonna apply it. That gives us this uh, little like rounded square circle guy here with a bunch of geometry in it. And what we are gonna do is we are gonna play around with our simple deforms. So we are gonna throw it on and we're gonna find a good base shape. Just play around with all these different settings. There are a ton available here where you can get a bunch of different shapes. Some of them are giant by the way. Um, but yeah, just play around until you find like a base shape that you like. I think to start, I'm gonna go with something like this where you've got this like potato chip kind of look and I'm gonna go ahead and apply this. Now you don't have to apply that if you don't want to, if you're not like certain of your shape, but I'm gonna apply it for now. You can always come back and like, you know, apply it later if you want. Right now we're gonna add an array modifier to our scene and we are gonna stack these vertically. So we're gonna change our X value to zero and our Z value to one. We might actually turn that down just a little bit, something maybe more like 0.4. And then we are going to duplicate these a whole bunch. Something that I forgot to do real quick is we are gonna throw a solidifier modifier on this and we are gonna move it above the array modifier. And then we're just gonna add just a tiny little smidge of thickness to everything. Now that we have those on, again, we are gonna jump right back in with our simple deform modifiers and we are just gonna be stacking these until we can find a cool shape that we like. All right, so after a little bit of experimenting on our first simple deform, I went with twist on our X axis and I set it to 360 and then added another one set it to twist and then I set it to the Z axis at negative 39. This is just to give it a little bit of warp in the shape to not keep it so consistent. And then I added another one on top of that. We set it to taper, negative 0.895, and again on our Z axis, again to do the same thing, to break up some of that consistency within our shape, get rid of some of like the geometric certainty of it, I guess. Felt like a really art snobby way to say, I'm making it look non-uniform. After that, we throw another subdiv on it to smooth everything out and we find a camera angle. So this is the camera angle I ended up going with. I think it shows off a bit of our, our front detail and gives us a bit of background texture. And I think it's gonna be good enough for what we got going on now. We have some very temporary lighting in because I don't know what we're gonna do with the lighting until we get the glass shader in here. Speaking of which, we should probably do that. How that works is we're gonna go file and then click on append. You're gonna find the dispersed glass 2.0 blend file, which will be named something different from what you're gonna see me click on here. You're gonna go inside it, then you're gonna go to material, and then you are going to click on whatever it is called. I think it's gonna be called dispersed glass two. You click it, you click append, then you click your object, go to your materials, and there it is. So if we throw this on right away, you can see that we have got some things to work on. First things first, let's turn our clear off. And there we go. Now we've already got some cool reflection and refraction happening, I like that. Let's figure out what we want for our base colors. I'm thinking maybe something in the blue range, but something lighter blue than what we have going on right now. So I'm gonna adjust our dark blue refraction value bring it over just a smidge so we don't end up too much in the greens. I'm also thinking I want to up our roughness just a little bit, not a ton, but a little bit. Maybe lower our transmission a smidge and then lower our roughness, save on that noise value again. I think that's a good start for the moment. Let's work on some lighting. So when you're lighting glass objects, something really important to remember is that you want to create that same kind of contrast that you would lighting any other object, but what drives glass to look good and look real is going to be your reflections. So what you're gonna see me do here several times while I'm lighting this is placing little lights in strange positions because I like the reflections that they're giving into the camera and they're drawing my eye towards the center of the object a little bit more while keeping the image a little bit lively and just making it look more fun and pleasing to look at. So what you're gonna to have to do is play with things. You're gonna to have to drop in lights and move them around and make a background and then delete it because you didn't like it. And you're just going to have to experiment with it until you find something that looks good. It's not an exact science, but trust me, you're gonna get there. So now with some base lighting set up, let's go ahead and dive back into the material for this. We are gonna be combining with a principled BSBF, which you guys see me do a lot. I love combining class, or not class, but glass with subsurface materials. I just think it always looks good. So we're gonna set this up real quick. Um, Let's see, we're gonna be going with our green, so let's let's crank up our subsurf and then set it into maybe like a, a kind of like blue-green highlight area. Let's work on our subsurf radius, maybe kind of get rid of that red a little bit. Something like this probably. Yeah, that looks pretty good, I like that. Okay, so let's crank up our roughness on that because we want this to show as like a stark contrast to our glass. 
We're gonna go ahead and duplicate that and we're gonna plug that one in. I don't have Node Wrangler turned on for whatever reason right now. We're gonna select a slightly different color, something in our blue to purple range like this. And we are going to mix these together using a mix shader, a noise texture, and a color ramp. So we're gonna take our noise texture color into our color ramp, color ramp output into our factor output, and then we're going to view this. Let's go ahead and view it in Material Viewer just to make it a little bit easier on ourselves. And we're gonna pull these two in till they're a little bit closer. so We can see where that fade is. There we go, now we can see that other one starting to come in a little bit more. Let's go ahead and crank up our noise a little bit. I kinda of want this to be a little bit of a, a noisy material. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this noise and color ramp and we are gonna add a bump down here and take our color output into our height of our bump and we are gonna plug it in to both of these principal BSDFs. This just makes it so that whenever we adjust our noise, we get a little bit of a, a fake bump on our texture to kind of show where the two textures are like deforming and like wearing thin or whatever's going on here in your scene, you know? So these are the settings that I used for our noise texture here. And you can see that we kind of have like a, a noisy, bumpy, almost scaly, but not as like geometric kind of output here. But now that we have that set up and we have our glass shader set over here, we can take our mix shader and we're basically going to do the exact same thing that we just did, but with our glass shader and with these two principal BSDFs we made. So again, that's noise texture into color ramp, color ramp into our mix shader, then that mix shader into our output. And you can see that I have lowered the noise scale here tremendously because we don't want this to be uh, the same kind of noise breakup we had before. And this is something that when we're moving this around, it might be better to tell what we're doing in rendered view. We can see where our light is falling a bit more easily this way, and we can kind of come to uh, a decision on where we want things to fall. All right, so these are the settings that I've landed on for this noise texture and for our mapping node. I also changed up our colors a little bit more. I, I didn't like how much green there was, so I changed our little speckles to black, and with our subsurf, they appear kind of like an orangey color. And then with this, I made it a little bit more blue than it was green before. I also changed up our green our green color, God, in our glass shader to be a little bit more of a teal than it was so much dark green. You can see we're still keeping a lot of the green in the background, but up close in our forefront, there's more of a, a color contrast. And I like the way that that looks. So one last thing that we can do is drop ourselves in a little cube. We're gonna scale it down and we're gonna move it till it's about right in front of our camera. We can select our camera. We can scroll down to depth of field, take our little eyedropper icon, click on the cube, go into the cube's property settings, go to viewport display, change it to wire. That's a lot of information, very fast, I realize. But now if we go back into our material view, we can set our depth of field using this cube a little bit easier, get a lot more precise. And then we can kind of crank that up and give ourselves a little bit more of a, a cinematic look on this render. So yeah, with all of that set up, that is the basis of how we got those two scenes in the beginning. Very simple scenes that are primarily drawn up from the simple deform modifier. And then when you mix in, you know, kind of more complex materials, you can make these very eye-catching um, kind of images. Stuff that if you spent a little bit more time with, you get a very like Wes Cox kind of feel where he has a lot of detail put into these very simple kind of uh, objects and they're they're very beautiful very pleasing to look at thank you so much for watching this video please do keep in mind that this glass shader is available for free in my description on my gumroad page and if you want the other project files that i showed off with the promotion for this uh, product they are available on my patreon speaking of my patreon thank you so much to my patrons for supporting me and making this all possible i really do appreciate it i know i say the same thing every week but I continue to appreciate it every week. Again, thank you so much for watching and I hope you all have a wonderful day. I will see you again real soon.